All right, so today I'm going to be uh, working on creating a little cover for a little key fob thing. So this is a little security system, little buttons you can press to activate and gauge. One of them is an SOS button, and that button will uh, trigger the uh, alarm immediately. And it's basically a hair trigger. I put this uh, in my pocket, reach in, grab my keys that are near it, and bam, set off the alarm. And that, I got tired of that. So I figured I have a 3D printer, I have free CAD, and uh, see if I can make a little cover for it. So that's this here. And uh, it just slides right on. And uh, it uh, prevents accidental and pushing on the buttons. You can still actually push the buttons through this, so if necessary, you can trigger. But um, it, it's nice, it fits, and uh, the buttons are rubberized, so. Uh, it will actually uh, keep it from sliding, so you actually have to give a little bit of force to move it, so that's nice. Most of the time I just use it to uh, deactivate. Um, I'll use the keypad to um, activate it. So, uh, um, let's get going. I'll show you how I did it in uh, FreeCAD. So let's uh, jump over to desktop. There we go. <coughs> All right. Or I guess we can put my, I don't know, do we need my ugly mug? No, let's just do the desktop. All right, so what you want to do is in pre-CAD, there's a thing called part design. Uh, you can uh, just, you know, click on your start, and it'll basically bring up something like this. You can uh, new, and uh, you're already starting basically in it. And if you do this, you have to, I don't know. You have to create a sketch. No, don't do that. Uh, part. So we want to go to a part. Okay. No, part design. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to create a sketch. And I like, I'm going to be working on it from above. So it would be looking down. Um, and the, so we're going to look at the profile looking down. Um, the profile, so we'll, we'll, we, XY plane is the one we want, so we'll look at that from above. The grid size I have set to one millimeter, so we're going to be doing all this in millimeters. And now, one thing I want to go over to the workbench and show you something. Uh, this is a uh, caliper, and it's set for millimeters. And so I took some measurements, and the key measurements is about 32 uh, millimeters this way. And um, another uh, key measurement is about three millimeters in is where I want to basically come in contact with uh, the unit. So three millimeters there, and then there's, I believe it's 11 millimeters to cover the to clear the buttons or just barely clear it in this case. So those are the um, key measurements we're gonna need. So I do recommend having getting one of these little uh, electronic ones, especially when you get older, because you can, uh, it's easier to read than trying to, what is it, is it? So um, most of the stuff I do, it doesn't need to be that uh, accurate or precise, so that's fine for me. So let's get back to the uh, free CAD. So one of the things I do, I don't know if this is the right way of doing that, is we're going to be doing a mirror. So what we're going to, I, I, I'm going to be working on this right side over here. And uh, you don't want to put anything to the left of this um, because we're, that's everything that's on this side we're going to mirror. The uh, piece we're going to make is symmetrical. So one side is the same as the other except it's mirrored. So, um, so all our stuff is going to be based to the right. And the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, oops, there's a sketch. Uh, we're just going to put some reference points. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just go over to, if you remember, we had a 16, but we want to move in about three millimeters. So I'm just going to set this to three millimeters if I can. There's probably some way to, there we go. So now we have a point that we're going to start all our measurements from. And up top here, 
we have an arc tool so we're going to go ahead and use that and uh, just grab it out and then we're going to make our main arc and I want to go and this is going to depend on how well your printer works and stuff like that but so if I go three it's gonna it because the printing can change the shape stuff like that I give myself a little extra so I'm gonna go 3.8 and we want to go 90 degrees so we'll click there and now we can draw up to 180 degrees or thereabouts and that'll be a first um, uh, art now this is where the inside of half of the uh, or Bob's going to go. Um, at this point, I'm going to want, okay, I think I'm going to make another reference point, and this will be um, down to, actually, let's make a, a line, so let's cancel out of that. I just right click. Uh, so we'll come down here, and we're going to make a, an actual line starting at five, five and a half, because that half of 11 so right there and then we'll make this for about well, you know we don't need a lot just maybe you know, one and a half millimeters so now we need to go jump this up a bit which will be down to this level there so we'll, we'll we'll just eyeball this so we'll clear this down maybe one and a half here uh -huh. right about there now we're going to jump back to our arc and to make another arc it's going to um, be uh, starting from the same s reference spot here so we're going to pull that down until we get to this point and we're going to uh, actually take that back we're going to unclick out of that and then this piece we're going to go ahead and delete yeah, we want to go up first so we'll go back to our line let's draw a straight draw a straight line, make sure that turns to yellow. And we'll go up about one millimeter. Now we'll have we'll create our arc from this because I want I don't want to I'm going to want to cut the arc short about around there. So we'll grab our or arc again, key on our center point, come up here, you'll see it turn yellow. So we'll click there and now we can draw this part around and we just want to stop right about there okay got that we want to go down now so we'll go down that's about there and let's create a arc using this point that from this line we'll grab our arc again grab this but we're going to key it on this piece here and we're just going to arc that around so right about there and we're going to grab our straight line again and drag it over and get there grab our other straight line and link those parts. Now we have these, <coughs> this part here is a reference point, but we don't need it anymore. So we're going to go ahead and delete. Oh, no, we need that because it's a reference point. Never mind. So now we, we have our two dimensional uh, uh, drawing. So let me remove four oh, we got redundant stuff I don't know what I'm talking about it should be clear but anyway we'll go ahead and close that yeah that doesn't look right edit back 
if something's not lining up, why not? Hand if that probably was the problem. So we'll go ahead and just redraw the Not looking easily. Go ahead and delete that. Redraw our arc. got a drawing now. <coughs> now we can go ahead and um, pad it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it like that. That This will change it so you're looking at a, a, like an isometric 3D view on its side. So we're going to go ahead and pad it. And I took some measurements earlier and I found that 40 millimeters is pretty good. So I'm just using a scroll knit wheel to scroll it out and then clicking the middle wheel to move this. So <coughs> That's what our part looks like, and uh, we're done. Well, no. We'll go ahead and apply that, but now we need to use, um, we'll select that, and then we're going to create a mirrored feature. And you'll see that it automatically mirrored it on the vertical sketch axis. So that's why we draw everything on to the right of it, and boom, automatically mirrored. Once you're at this point, all you have to do to get a 3D print is to uh, uh, make sure you save, because we didn't do that, so we'll call this um, QFOB Cover um, V2. Then, um, then we can go ahead and export it. We go back to the model. We click because we we've added a pad and a mirrored function. So the thing that we want to um, export is everything. So buried underneath this pad is the actual sketch we started with, which has an error, which doesn't like. It's not constrained, but I'm not too worried about that because it's the shape that I need it to be. Um, and then it's padded, so that gives us the vertical height. And then we mirrored it so we get both halves of the piece we want. So now we'll go ahead and export it. And you just go into the file type and select STL. At least that's what I need for, I'm going to be putting this into Cura, Cura. And so we'll push mesh, for, mesh formats. And again, we'll, we'll call this keyboard version T. Bob cover version 2, save that, um, bring up Cura, and all my settings are already set, these are my standard settings for my printer, I, I use a mono price printer, it's now getting a little few years old, um, and we'll go ahead and open the file, 
and we'll find our version 2 FTL. We open that and it brings it right in. Um, I don't need a new version, this works fine for me. I've run into that before we download the latest version and suddenly all your stuff doesn't work. So, <coughs> at this point, you uh, can then uh, save. I, I don't like to automatically save a removable drive because the one that I actually have in there is not where I want to target this. Um, so we'll go ahead and save to file and then click the button and we'll call it already has it labeled out. I have a folder 3D so we'll go ahead and save that. And then it's just a matter of copying the uh, file to your 3D printer and uh, let's see. Then, whoops, sorry about that. Then printing it. Anyway, so then uh, you uh, then you wind up with your your piece. Yeah. It actually um, took uh, 35, 40 minutes to print. Uh, when I was recording the uh, print, it, uh, the camera decided that it was going to run out of space. So I only got a few minutes toward the end, so I didn't want to bother you with showing you that. I was going to, if I had the whole thing, I would just run it, really speed it up and stuff like that. But <coughs> So anyway, the uh, I, I got lucky because the first try... Uh, it fits like a glove and it's just boom and uh, something I'll actually use you know something that day to day I guess I won't have to worry about blasting my ears when the alarm goes off so there's that that's cool so again that's uh, a little uh, bit of free CAD um, that you can uh, Yeah, that work bench. There we go. Yeah, so uh, yeah, another way to do the parts is to use um, what's called part, and uh, we'll have to do probably a new one. But anyway, I I, th I think I covered that in another. That uses additive and subtractive type of design. But since this was a really simple um, um, uh, piece that has you know a, a simple outline that doing an extrude like this or padding as they call it was the, was the way to go so that's all i got so um catch y'all later